So I suppose there's a small part of me wondering whether it's kind of funny to be presenting something as ordinary as a, a new journal in a flash talk session called Visions at the Force 2015 conference. I think at last count from yesterday, this will be the 23,003rd journal joining the scholar literature. So <laughs> kind of sorry about that. But we are super serious and very, very excited about this new journal we're launching called Collabra, which will be opening for submissions later on this spring. Um, as Anita said, we are the University of California Press based in Oakland, California, uh, the non-profit publishing arm of the University of California system. And this is our first step into the world of False 11 style matters. And Neil Blair Christensen, my colleague, and I are part of a small digital team there. There's obviously lots to tell you about, but in five minutes I'll focus on what is truly new and we think unique about the journal. Um, to confirm up front, this is an APC-supported open access journal, CCBY, throughout with the objective peer review style pioneered by PLOS One, that I'm going to start calling Selective for Credibility, by the way, and uh, also optional open review. But the journal is primarily a bold shift away from the established notion that all direct and tangible value um, flows solely to um, one stakeholder, despite um, value being added by multiple stakeholders. It is as simple as this. We will share a proportion of the article processing charge with the research community of editors and reviewers that work on the journal. Starting from scratch and being mission focused as we are, and working with incredibly efficient partners such as Ubiquity Press, um, who will be powering our platform, we're able to bring the APC down to $875, that is, but really, it's going to be $625, because that's the only part that we're keeping to pay for all our publication costs. $250 will go into the research community fund, and this is the main point. Editors and reviewers will build up credit by working on the journal, regardless of the final decision, and money goes into this fund for every article accepted. Several times a year, there will be a payout from this account based on the work performed, or rather, editors and reviewers can decide what to do with their earnings. The money is purely for the research community, never for us, the publisher, and we're kind of putting three options in there, to receive it electronically in cash, i.e. get paid, pay it forward to the Collabora waiver fund, uh, which will pay APCs on behalf of authors who need the support, um, which of course supports authors at Collabora, or to show that paying it forward is not some elaborate lock-in scheme to this journal only, you can pay it forward to your institution's open access fund support, to support any authors publishing at your institution in any open access journal. So I know the headlines will be, and in fact already have been overnight, um, that this is the journal where reviewers get paid. And of course, while this is an outcome, it is more complex than that. It's the journal where reviewers and editors can elect to pay themselves or pay it forward. So it's more about being involved than being paid. So, a quick recap. The mission first, we're doing this to start the conversation and see if everyone can benefit from, this, benefit from the successful operation of a journal. Low APCs built from the ground up at non-profit margins. Hope to share and spread the value around the academy and the research community. And no lock-in. And innovation through partnerships. I've already mentioned Ubiquity Press, and therefore will benefit from all their partnerships, such as with PLOS ALM and Hypothesis, etc. Um, but we're also exploring transparency and open science initiatives with the Center for Open Science and the Berkeley Initiative for Transparency and Social Sciences. And we'll also work closely with our cousins at the California Digital Library down the street in Oakland. So at scale, it's about more open access for everybody. Um, the journal will aim to soon cover all scholarly disciplines, and this is just the senior editors for now. Um, but for now, we're focusing on the life sciences, the social and behavioral sciences, and environmental sciences and ecology. And we're actively building the editorial teams. Uh, the senior editors will steer the journal along with us and be very visible so that authors can see trusted community members at its helm. I'm delighted to say that Marianne Martin will be joining us, so thank you very much, Marianne. Um, if anybody in this room wants to be involved, please let me know, or if anybody knows anybody who you know would want to be involved with this, please put them in touch. <laughs> I don't have any more time. I could obviously talk about this for hours and hours. Um, so for now, just please keep an eye out for us, check us out online, follow us on Twitter. We've only got 30 followers so far, but we did only launch that last week. Um, share our website, join the conversation, and please just grab me afterwards or write to me afterwards if you'd like to speak to me. This is our team, and there's our contact details, so thank you very much.
any uh, pressing questions? Peter, not surprising. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, uh, I reserve judgment about paying uh, for review. I won't call it paying authors, and I hope that most authors actually would um, donate uh, this to a communal pool. So that could work out well, or it could be a problem. I'm interested in your $650. Uh, can I ask that you make the split of this as transparent as possible? So in other words, you have um, the management of review, you have the management of production, you have the cost of outsourcing some of the production. I mean, I'm a fan of Ubiquity Press in general, but I'm not a fan of publishers at all. Um, and, uh, for, example, uh, for example, what we see at the moment is for publication, $200 approximately spent on typesetting, the only purpose of which is actually to destroy and corrupt the information. So, but it's true. What? I know Cabby takes the same view. Very do say that. But what we would like to know is, you know, if an author says, well, I actually don't want my stuff typeset, you know, and I save $200 that way, if we have a complete breakdown of the cost, then we really know what it costs to publish open access. No, and you're right. We're thankful. We're thankful to be working with Ubiquity, who I think were one of the first organizations to really split out what stuff pays for you know and that's one of the that's the main reason we wanted to speak with them because we wanted to be the first apc that's really built from the ground up rather than transitioning a legacy margin into just a figure from mid -air. um i should probably hurry up but no i completely agree the whole point is that this is a community journal we are going to be working with community to establish standards and I'm very interested in the kind of menu drop down selections if people don't want certain things. This is all in the future but uh, I would love to work with you Peter and I'd love to take your advice formally or informally however you'd like to give it.